on December 23rd, 1871, the California Street Methodist Episcopal Church was organized by a group of 16. Mm -hmm. That was its beginning. And in 1889, the name Christ Emmy Church was made official. And plans were begun for a new building at 22nd and Ogden. Mm -hmm. That was before the church was immediately before it moved to 7th and Colorado. And when they came to 7th and Colorado, that area was almost entirely apple orchards. That's what the people have told me. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't come until 1945. So, of course, I haven't been here that long. <laughs> you haven't been there that long, since no. 1945? Or did you and Bob meet? At Christ At Church. At Christ Church? When was choir. that? In the choir. 49, I think it was. 49. 49. And, and did you start singing right away? Was oh, that, yes. I was did. in the choir immediately. Uh-huh. And our choir practice was held up where the choir room is now. Only the whole back of the church was wide open, and people sat up there uh, for services when we had overloaded crowds. It was actually a balcony to the church. Mm -hmm. We wanted a place that had an organ. That was very important to us. We, I wanted some place where there was intellectual stimulation, and uh, also we wanted some place where you could be innovative in worship, because at that time we were involved in sacred dance. So we, so we wanted some place where, not that we necessarily had to do sacred dance here, but where that wouldn't be out of the ordinary or wouldn't be too unusual. Do the people want to know that I've spent all my years at Christchurch trying not to be on a board <laughs> or a committee, but that's the truth. I think another high point was building the Millennium House, which was a Habitat for Humanity house that we built and christened, to be christened a house, on December 31st, 1999. Because that was showing that we had faith that the world was not going to end and we were building for the future and we were reaching out to the community and a Muslim family took that, so we gave them the Bible as all Habitat houses do, but we also got permission to give them a copy of the Quran. Has there been a person at Christ Church who has influenced in your life? I think you've already talked to some. Right, and the other person, of course, is Ray Cushman. Oh. You know, Everyone mentioned Even Ray. my mom will come in on, she won't remember his name, but that man at the door who greeted us, uh, he was so, he was, he was so Christ Church. Yeah. You know, the other one was Yvonne Dawson. Yeah. And, of course, she was just, she was Christ she Church. She was. You know, she just was. When I was a kid, I gave my mom quite a bit of trouble. I was a juvenile delinquent. <laughs> I, gave my mom, I gave my mom a lot of trouble. And I went to this Mountain View Girl School. And I remember Reverend Kime, I was mad at him because he recommended that I go. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we thought, well, he was mean. <laughs> and he looked back on it now, and it was because he thought it was the best thing for me at the mm -hmm. time. Tell uh, Roger what he said when he came and wanted you to be chairman of the official board. I forgot oh. <laughs> what he said. Well, you were a little reluctant and hesitant, and uh, uh, he said, uh, I think you told him, he said, I like to take a drink once in a while. <laughs> no, not you. <laughs> and, uh, Dr. Klein said, uh, well, I enjoy a little wine myself. <laughs> uh, but one of the most memorable events at, at uh, Christ Church was when Loretta Smith whacked out the light. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, 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 really, I, that, that I was absolutely missed that. <laughs> uh, it was really a nice thing. You know, they, they used to do these this 
interpretive dance and stuff. And sacred dancing. Sacred dance. But you they, guys did that, didn't mm -hmm. you? Uh, but they, she, they were doing it with, with Loretta with long poles on this occasion. <laughs> and one of those poles was a little longer than the distance to the light. And so it was after that that we got sort of plastic covers for the light. <laughs> Well, one of our most memorable experiences happened last night. Mm. In 2006, George and I were both on uh, the administrative board, and we were struggling with what we were going to do about the bees. Now, the bees were not causing the congregation any danger, but the bees were coming into the choir room and dying, and some would be still alive when they were having choir practice and the problem was escalating. Finally, we, in all good conscience, hired a company to come and take the honey out of upstairs, our roof, and to tear up the roof to do it, and there were layer after layer after layer of honeycomb. Well, last night we had dinner guests, and the dinner guests live in the neighborhood. And um, where did our bees go? And she felt like that they did not have as many bees this summer for their garden area for the worker bees to do things and to pollinate right. what bees do. And she felt like that their bees were sleeping at our church in the nighttime. My bee story, but it's just another part of a ripple effect where you think you're doing the best job possible and somebody else is affected by it.